you know, and when we think about fasting, you know, we think about, okay, I'm going to give up a meal. You know, I'm going to give up media. I'm going to give up, you know, something like that. And this guy says, I'm going to give up smoking marijuana for 21 days. <laughs> and, and the pastor, you know, I, I, as a preacher, I can like, I, I know, whoo, Lord Jesus, help this brother, you know. <laughs> and, and so the pastor's like, yes. And he got excited because the man was making a decision. I'm going to give up something. He, he may not have understood. He might have been an infant in the faith. He might not have been saved at all. But the pastor did the right thing. He was excited about somebody was having faith to step out on it and to act upon the gospel of Jesus Christ. And at the end of the 21 days and, and then maybe a month later, the same guy came, came to the pastor and he said, you know, because this guy, let me give you this, he, he was a bartender. He, he was working, you know, and you know what bartenders do. And so he was doing that. And so he, about a month later, after the 21 days of, of prayer and fasting was over, he came back to the pastor and he said, you know, he, he said, I want you to pray with me. He said, I can't, I can't do this, this job anymore. He, he said, I just, I feel like it ain't right. I feel like God's got something else for me. And, and so the pastor, he didn't make excuses. He didn't say, well, you, you, you should have quit that. He, no. He, he looked at his heart. He looked at his circumstances. He looked at where he was coming from. And the pastor prayed with him. And the guy got a new job. And the guy's now, years later, he's now a leader in that church. You see... When I, when I see somebody get saved, when, when I see you demonstrating the faith, when I, when I see you walking out the grace that God has given to you, and, and I see the kindness that you treat other people with because you've received unmerited favor. And that unmerited favor, it's not just... Listen, the first time you prayed, God forgave you of your sins. And now as you're growing in the grace and the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ and, you, and you're celebrating what Christ did in you and now as you encounter other people, and yes, they're not perfect, they're not doing everything wonderful, but you look past that and you look at what can be in their lives instead of what is. You see, Paul is a former murderer. And he has experienced grace and he's excited about others receiving that same wonderful grace. You see, Paul knows that they're not all perfect. As he's writing this letter to the church at Coloss, he, you see him just thanking God for them and praying for them and encourage them. He knows they're not perfect. We're going to read a, a couple of passages in this same letter where it is an indicator these folks were not perfect. He says in Colossians chapter 2, verse 20 and 21, he says, you have died with Christ and he has set you free from the spiritual powers of this world. And then he asked them a question. If they were perfect, he wouldn't have to ask this question. Why do you keep on following the rules of the world such as don't handle, don't taste, don't taste, don't touch. In other words, they received it. When you go back and you read the book of Galatians, you see the same pattern here where Paul is, is bragging on them. But then he says, why are you leaning back on what you can do as though you can earn it? You can't. And, then, and that's what Paul is, is pointing out to the wonderful brothers and sisters in Christ at Coloss. Because they got in church, but then they, they began to lean toward this idea that, whoo, man, I, I'm glad I got it going on. <laughs> uh, can I tell you something, church? I ain't got it going on. Every single day, I still need God's grace. God's mercy, God's love to direct my life. 
And, and, and I, don't, I, I want to be here where Paul is talking about, man, I'm just so thankful for what God's doing in your life, in your life, in your life, in your life. I'm praying for you. I know we're not perfect. Praise God. The day that we become perfect is the day that we step over on the other side. That's when we're going to be perfect. That's when we got it made. That's when we don't have to wrestle with the flesh anymore. Paul, he says, you're hanging on to what can I do to be good enough? Nothing. Nothing. There, there is no good thing that I can do to be accepted in the beloved. I accept him by faith. And, and then Paul, he talks in chapter 3 about things to put to death, things to how to put off the old man and put on the new man. Uh, and then he talks about things to put on. He says in chapter 3, verse 12 and 14, he says, since God chose you to be holy people he loves, he says, you, you got to clothe yourselves. What do, what do you put on? He says, tender-hearted mercy. That's what you put on. He says, put on kindness. Put on humility. Put on gentleness and, and patience. He says, make allowance for each other's faults. And forgive anyone who offends you. I know that never happens. For forgive anyone who, just in case you run across somebody that offends you, a situation that offends you, a circumstance that offends you, just in case you run across that, here's what we're supposed to do. He, he says, forgive. Forgive. He says, remember, the Lord forgave you so you also must forgive others. Ricky, you remember that day that you were weeping at the altar? You remember that day that you were driving down the road and, and, and a, a bad thought, somebody cut you off in, tra in traffic and a bad thought crossed your mind and maybe you gave a symbol or, or something like that? Remember? And you said, oh, Lord, forgive me. And, and I did. He said, I forgave you right then. He said, when people do that to you, he said, I forgave you, Ricky. Forgive them. Forgive them. He said, above all, clothe yourselves with love, which binds us together in perfect harmony. Clothe yourselves with love. How many of you, I'm scared to ask this, I don't, I don't, maybe you do, I don't know. I didn't sleep in this last night, okay? I, I didn't, I, you know, had my jammer doos on. And when I woke up this morning, I had to change clothes. I didn't want to come to church in my jammer doos, you know. And, and so I got up and got, I combed my hair. And, yeah, yeah. And, and I put on my, my Sunday duds. I had to clothe myself. And you know something? It didn't just happen. I had to be intentional about it. Can I tell you something, church? When we clothe ourselves with the mercy and the grace and the kindness and the tenderheartedness and love, when you clothe yourselves with these things, it's intentional. I put it on every day. I do. Because I, I, I don't know about you. Maybe I'm just, I try not to wear my feelings on, you've heard the old saying, wear your feelings on your sleeve. I try not to do that because I know somebody's going to say something. Somebody's going to do something. But even knowing that somebody's going to say something, somebody's going to do something, I, I need to, I need to decide before it happens, I'm going to forgive them. I'm going to forgive them. You say, but preacher, you just don't know. God knows. <laughs> and and I, I don't know your exact situation, but I, like I said, I, I've experienced a lot in life, and this is what I found. There is no occasion 
where I can hold a grudge. No occasion. Why? Because, man, if, 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 if there's ever been a human being who's ever lived who did not deserve God's grace and God's mercy, he's standing right here. I didn't deserve it. I didn't earn it. But just like that first servant that Jesus talked about, I was forgiven everything. More than I could ever repay. Everything. And because I've been forgiven of everything, I, I feel like I owe it to people to forgive them. You say, but Brother Ricky, they don't deserve it. Neither did I. They, they can never be good enough. Neither can I. They, they can, I don't believe they're saved. It doesn't matter. The, the Bible says, the, the Word of God says that while we were sinners, Christ died for us. He says, Paul says, we always pray for you. And we give thanks to God for you. Why? For we have heard of your faith in Christ Jesus and your love for all of God's people. Did you catch that? Remember, we already pointed out the church at Colossus, they had faults, didn't they? But what does Paul say about them? He says they got faith and they got love for God's people. Amen. That's good stuff. So church, when we hear of other people's faith in Christ, be thankful. Praise God for them. I know the temptation, at least for me, I ain't speaking for you, but for me, a lot of times I see the faults, I see the failures, I see the shortcomings. But over the years, I'm learning. I'm going to look past that. You know, I used to struggle uh, with there in the Scripture that uh, in 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 13, it's what we call the love chapter. Where, where Paul, uh, at least in the King James, the New King James uh, Bibles I typically read, uh, but I like other translations as well. Uh, over the years of studying this, that little portion there where it talks about believes all things, I'm like, I'm sorry. I am not believing everything that comes down the pike. And, and that's, that's not what it's saying. It's saying you believe the best about people. And so I'll confess, it's been a wrestling match for me because I see sometimes, oh, as, as I've gone through several uh, training classes uh, with the school, uh, learning, to, uh, learning how to be a a, a school bus driver and work with these kids. Uh, I'll never forget one of the one of the most valuable classes that I've ever taken. Uh, they were talking about how how do you deal with children who it seems like never does anything right. Uh, I'll say this. I hope it don't get back to my grand boys. Uh, I told somebody the other day. They, they were asking about my family. I said, yeah, I got two grand boys and one granddaughter. I said, uh, she can't do anything wrong. and They can't do anything right. Uh, they, and sometimes, you know, and, th and that's what this class was about. It was about those children or those people that you meet that it, it seems like they're in that category of they just can't do anything right. And, and, and so the, the instructor of this class said, you're, you're going to have to use effort. You, you're going to have to intentionally look and watch that person. And as soon as you see one thing, the smallest of things, if you see one thing that they do right, you need to immediately brag on them. 
You need to look for the best in them. It's going to be hard to find in some. But you look for that one thing that they did right and you immediately praise them for it. And, and listen, you do that, and I've tried it, church. I've done it. And I love, I do, I love my children on the bus. I love them with all my heart. Can I tell you something? There's some of them I have to look pretty hard. Because I've had some turkeys. <laughs> That's what we call them, turkeys. I've had some turkeys. And you know something, church? You're going to have some turkeys in life. You're going to have some in your family. You're going to have some in your church, in your community. You're going to have them. But look for something in that person to praise God for. Look for a reason to be thankful. Look for a reason to say, God, I'm glad this person's in my life. And it may be a challenge, but I promise you, you do that, you go about, you let that grace that you received guide you when you're dealing with other people. That wonderful grace, that unmerited favor. Remember how you received it. Don't be like that first servant. Be like be like Jesus. Be like Paul. I received grace. So I'm going to give grace. Amen. Amen. When you do that.